any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. protect the community against crime, law enforcement agencies on every level must work together. But even to a greater degree, they must count on the cooperation of the people they protect. In this case, the Highway Patrol, working with the State Narcotics Bureau, received invaluable aid from a bedridden victim. Hi, Angie. How are you feeling? Lousy. Well, even that's an improvement over yesterday. This is Mr. Matthews. He's with the Highway Patrol. From the information you've given us, the Narcotics Bureau may need his help. Hello, Angie. Angie turned herself in for treatment a few weeks ago, Dan. Since then, she's done everything possible to help us. Haven't you, Angie? I'm doing it to help me. It's the same thing, isn't it? I guess so. I'm sorry. I get pretty jumpy lying here all day. Look, Angie, we hate to upset you, but this is so very important to all of us. I want you to tell Mr. Matthews exactly what you told me this morning. About Bolo, you mean? Yes, please. Bolo's a pusher. That's all I know about him. Just his first name. And the stuff he handles. Heroin. Bolo always had plenty of age for me. Once I needed it bad. Real bad. Like I was gonna bust wide open if I couldn't get a fix. Bola promised me he'd have some for him. But when I met him, he didn't have any H. None at all. He said the car should have been down from upstate, but that he couldn't find it. It wasn't parked where it should be. He kept saying, no car, no H. No car, no H. Like that. No H, no kicks. No H, no nothing. No nothing at all. No nothing at all. All right, that's enough, Angie. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Angie. We appreciate your help. Now it's our turn to help you. Is that a promise, Coleman? A promise. Isn't it? Yeah, no cars, no H. From what Angie says, they're using the highways to bring the stuff in. That's why we need your highway patrol in this case. Yeah, what about Bolo? We could pick him up. I think we can use him better by watching. Let's use him. We may be able to find out which cars are carrying the heroin, what highways they're using, and where the stuff's all coming from. Hey, honey, look at this. Oh, gosh, I forgot all about that. Uh-uh, leave it there. The honeymoon isn't over yet. Well, it better not be. Spoil sport? Sorry, Mrs. Miller. Hey, that just married sign is false advertising. You two have been married for at least four days. Five. And, uh... 13 hours. Well, we certainly hope you enjoyed your stay here at Lakewood Lodge. It was wonderful, really. Well, everything's all set. Oh, really? Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Yeah, they just left here, Bolo. A young couple named Miller in a blue 55 convertible. Now take this down. License number 1M-905-80. Got it? Uh-huh, yeah. Their address is 645 Coates Avenue. Yeah, I got it from the hotel register. Yeah, yeah, they should be in town by tonight. 
Now listen, Bolo. It's in the left front wheel. Got it? Left front wheel. Well, according to Ed Coleman, the Narcotics Bureau knows that dope peddling is on the increase in this area. The pushers are more active. They want us to help get the big boys, the ones at the top, the ones who keep the pushers in business. And the addicts on the verge of insanity. So all we have to go on so far is the testimony of one addict. And if what she says is true, somewhere upstate there's a dope ring operating. It's kind of a nerve center, a terminal point. And if our information is correct and the highways are being used to transport dope into this area, we all have the responsibility of stopping it. I'm going to check the tires, sir. Might be a good idea. 30 pounds. All right. Sleepy, darling? Uh-uh. Just thinking about you and me and, oh, everything. Is that good? Oh, naturally. Funny, though. A month ago, we didn't even know each other. And here we are married five long days and heading to a brand new life, a brand new home. <laughs> and still, we really don't know each other. I'll be happy to help with the research, Mrs. Miller. Well, thank you, Mr. Miller. Mr. Harris, a little low, sir. How low is it? Oh, it's not too bad. About four pounds off. It was over last time we stopped for gas, too. Well, it might be a slow leak. Got far to drive? Well, about 50 miles. It'll only take me a minute to fix it up for you. Well, seems like a good idea. Come on, Ian, let's get a sandwich while he's working on it. Keep the man and woman in the car with you. I'll get some men out there right away. The Millers and the mechanic were brought to headquarters for questioning, and the pouch full of white powder was turned over to the lab for analysis. The powder was identified almost immediately. It was heroin, but the Millers swore they knew nothing about it. And there was one good reason to believe them. If they'd known they had a hubcap full of heroin, they never would have let the mechanic fix that tire. A list was compiled of every stop the Millers had made during the last five days, and stakeouts were ordered for every one of them. Ed Coleman notified the Narcotics Bureau to run a background check on the staff employees at Lakeview Lodge. But there were still many questions to be answered by the Millers. Mr. Miller, when you left the lodge, did anybody know where you were going? Well, it was no secret. We were going home. To our new apartment. At 6.45, Coach Avenue, sir? Yes. Was anyone expecting you at any specific time? Any friends or relatives? No. Ms. Miller? Well, I come from South Dakota, and I don't have any family or friends here. Just Al, and his friends are my friends, and... And what, Mrs. Miller? Well, I really don't know much about Al's friends. Now, what kind of remark was that? Well, it's true. I hardly know your friends at all. Now, look, honey. You, you, you don't think I'm mixed up in this dope thing, do you? Well, do you? I didn't say that. It's just that I don't know. I don't know what to think. Look, Gloria, if you have any doubts about me, then... <laughs> Mr. Matthews, what can I do to help solve this case? Well, the best thing for you to do is get in your car and drive home. There's nothing to happen. Park in the usual place and forget all about it. Well, suppose uh, well, somebody comes around to collect that heroin. Then what? That's exactly what we want. A dope ring has chosen you two as a delivery service. Now, sooner or later, someone's going to show up to collect that delivery. Someone who might be able to lead us to the main source of supply. Let us handle this, and nobody will be hurt. You'll have protection from the minute you leave her. Well, I'd like to do more than... You've been very cooperative, both of you. We appreciate it. It's going to be a long wait. Yeah. I guess I better have another look around. Hey, Dan, come here. What? There's our boy, all right. Hey, 
for him to lose it. I'll tell him on foot. You follow in the car. Wait. Who's that? Oh, no, it's Miller. He's going to get himself cut to ribbons. I'm watching Miller. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I almost got him for you, didn't I? I almost got him. Well, he's gone. Not a trace of him. Well, Miller, you fixed things fine. Just fine. Well, I'm sorry. I, honest, I, I, I wanted to catch him. I wanted to bring him in and, and show Gloria I, I'm not mixed up in this. The next time you want to be a hero in front of your wife, do it on your own time, will you? We're right back where we started from now. Honest. I'm sorry. I... Look, do me a favor. No, do yourself a favor. Go home, will you? Sure meet him, don't you? Because of Al Miller's over-eagerness, the one possible link to the narcotics ring might have been lost. But Miller recognized the man in the parking lot from his mugshots. It was Angie's old friend, Bolo. Now, Bolo had to be picked up before he warned his bosses that the law was on his trail. State narcotics agents who knew Bolo's favorite hideouts had him behind bars within two hours. But the law wasn't satisfied with a small-time pusher, not while the big game was still at large. Impeccable service, luxurious surroundings, and the masterful planning of owner-manager Arnold Blackwell, whose other fine resorts are known the world over, make Lakewood Lodge the mecca for fastidious vacationers. Yeah, I'll bet it does. Has the check on the personnel at the lodge come in yet? No, it hasn't. You think we should wait for it, Dan? No, I don't. We had time in our favor before the Bolo incident. But if the bosses find out we picked him up, their lives not crawling back in the woodwork. They're up here at the lodge? Why not? The Millers were there for four days. The car was parked outside for four days and three nights. Yes, but your steakhouse haven't reported anything. They're still there, aren't they? The lodge is a big place. We need more coverage. Well, oh, let's face it, we had time before the Bolo incident. The news has got to get out about him eventually. Hello, give me long distance. You better get yourself some sports shirts. Oh, come on now. Use one of your own agents. It's out of my line. Look, Dan, you've been on this case from the start. We could drive up there in the time it'd take me to brief a new man. Hello? Uh, long distance? Uh, put me through to Crystal Springs, please. Yes. I want to talk to the reservations clerk at Lakewood Lodge. Mr. Arnold Blackwell, please. Call for Mr. Blackwell. Right here, son. Oh, Red, my boy, how are you? Just fine, sir. A message for you, Mr. Blackwell. Thank you. Thank you. Will you see that the service is discontinued in those rooms until we can put in some improvements? Yes, sir. Thank you, my boy. Gentlemen, thank you. It's good to be here. Long drive from the city. You should have taken our plane, sir. The lodge has its own landing strip, you know. We fly in tired tourists and fresh seafood every day. First time up here, sir? Yes. Uh, this is Mr. Daniels. My name's Edwards. We have reservations. Oh, of course, Mr. Edwards. I think there's a message for you at the desk. Your office has been trying to reach you. You can take the call here on the house phone. Oh, thank you. I'll pick up your keys at the desk. Excuse me. You get the call. I'll take care of stuff. All right. Mm -hmm, I've got it. Go ahead. Richardson, William, nickname Red, medium height, employed as a bellhop. Mm, I've got it. Right, fine, thanks. What's good at the office? Well, the R&I report just came in. There's a bellhop up here by the name of William Richardson. Has a record for narcotics violations in two states. Well, let's go have a talk with him. All right. Here you are, sir. What? Oh, yes. Frank, how are you? Cops. One of them's a narcotics man. I recognized him, so I monitored his phone call. He's looking for Red. Okay, I'll take care of it. Where is Red now? He's packing. There you are. Thank you, Frank. Any luck? No, not yet. Enjoying your stay at the lodge, gentlemen? Yeah, very much. You got a beautiful place here. Thank you. I'm Arnold Blackwell, your host. Your room's all right? Service in good order? Yes, thank you. Everything's just fine. Well, you know how it is. We like to keep our guests happy. So if there's anything you want, just let me know. We will. 
Oh, by the way, not ready to bell hop still around? Richardson? No, he's taken a few days off. But the switchboard operator said he was around a little while ago. Well, yes, that's right, he was, but uh, he got an urgent call from his family. His mother was taken sick, so naturally he took the first train home. Train? Yes, the train. The plane here at the lodge is for the guests. Where is Red's home, Mr. Blackwell? Oh, in the southern part of the state. I never can remember the names of those towns. If you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll find out. But just a minute, Mr. Blackwell. I'm afraid we'll have to ask for a little more definite information about your bellhop. Oh, I see. Is Red in trouble? I don't want any scandal here at the hotel, but there's anything I can do, anything at all. Well, right now, all we want to know is exactly what time Red left here, where he's going, and where his home address is. I'm sure that your personal files would have it. Well, yes, of course. I'll have the office get the information together for you. I can't believe that Red's in any difficulty. He's done such a fine job here. There's one more thing. I'd like to get the license number of that plane. The plane? It right, belongs to the lodge, doesn't it? Now, will you give it to us or do we call the CAA? Well, of course, I'll get it for you, but Red is traveling by train. He's probably still at the station. You can still catch him, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. All right, fine. We'll talk to him. Thanks, Mr. Blackwell. And while you're gone, I'll phone to the office for the files. Yeah, please do. Come on in. Sure, Dan. What are you up to? You think they're hiding Red? Well, you figure it out. Red's here. We show up, he disappears. Or maybe the bellhop recognized one of us. That's why he disappeared. Could be. But even if this is the narcotics depot, Red couldn't have taken the whole operation with him. Look, I'm with you. There's got to be some evidence around here someplace. Let's give him a chance to lead us to it. What if Black was telling the truth about Red? I'll have a man cover the railroad station. You check the airport. Alert the CAA. Have him hold all passengers and the pilot just in case Blackwell's not telling the truth. Okay. Listen, Frank, if they pick up that plane and find Red, he's bound to talk. You know how he is, under pressure. So we got to get rid of that stuff. Get rid of it fast. No, I got rid of the two cops for a while anyway. They've gone over to the railway depot looking for Red. Yes, so get down to the warehouse fast. Dump all of it. Dump it in the lake anywhere. Just get rid of it before those cops come back. Only. Oh, I'm not going to interrupt your work. You go right ahead. I just want to ask you some questions. Where's Red? What? Red Richardson. How should I know? I'm Matthews. I'm with the Highway Patrol. Red's wanted on a narcotics charge. You won't find him here. Why not? Look, mister, I've got work to do. Funny, so have I. Take it easy, kid. The noodles aren't gonna run away from you. Well, these must be awful important to you, Frank. You mind if I taste them? I can't open these cans. Well, sure you can. I'm a guest here at the hotel. Put it on my tab. I, I haven't got a can opener. A bellhop without a can opener. It's against the rules. Open this one right now. Satisfied now? What are you so worried about? Here, taste them. Now open this one. For Pete's sake, I got a job to do here. This is part of it. Open it. Now are you going to open it? Okay, okay. This is what the taxpayers pay you for? Stand around opening cans of dried noodles? Well, get wise, kid. You're opening them. Looks like we got a lot of cans to go to. 
Mr. Black will be plenty mad when he finds out about this. He'll... Uh... Boy, let me see that one. Well, what do you know? And noodle cans or hubcaps is still heroin, isn't it? Too bad you couldn't get rid of the cans, Frank. We're still getting rid of them. Now you're gonna help us. Come on, get those cartons out the station wagon and make it fast. Well, that's kind of a shabby way to treat a guest at the hotel. I don't think Mr. Blackwell would approve of this. Mr. Blackwell will approve, all right. Don't worry about that. He would. Well, that's all I want to know. All right. So you know. But it won't do you any good when the evidence is gone. Mr. Blackwell's a very respectable citizen. A hard man to build a case against. The case has already been built. Well, there he is. He's all yours. Now we'll pick up Blackwell. Well, that won't be any problem. The stakeouts are right on his tail back at the lodge. Okay. Come on, chum. Outside. What are you guys going to do with me? Uh, I was just doing a job for Mr. Blackwell. Well, you're going to be out of work for a while. We're closing the place for alterations. Let's go. Well, Ed, there's your evidence. All packages and delivered. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for everything. Oh, it's nothing. Forget it. I'm just trying to help you keep a promise, that's all. Dan's it, remember? 